Welcome to Uncle's Channel Fix Watching Day, and let's continue our journey to finish every single Game Boy Game Boy Color game. And today we're in a game called Survival Kids for the Game Boy Color. Now I never played like this particular game, however, like I knew a lot about it because my wife has mentioned it several times to me because like one of her all-time favorite games growing up. And so uh, it's about time I finally got around to uh, completing the game all the way through. But I have to say, this is like one of the very first uh, survival games that ever came out, at least to my knowledge anyway, because you're basically stranded on this little island here. You have to gather your supplies, keep your food going, your water going, all this going, just simply to survive, hence the title of the game. But also you're trying to get off the island and all your little misadventures and your mysteries that you're going to unfold along the way. It's actually a really fun game, and I think it's a little bit ahead of its time as well. But let's go ahead and dive into Survival Kids. Now this particular game did get moved up on the queue a little bit because Sayo7 requested one of my earlier videos to cover it sooner than later, so naturally moved it up in the queue. And if there's a game that you want to see me cover sooner than later, let me know the name of that game in the comments down below. And just like Survival Kids, I'll move it right up in the queue. Well, let's go ahead and get into the actual game. Now I'd like to start the videos off looking at the box art for the game first. And the box art for Survival Kids here, it summarizes the game pretty darn well. Has your main character smack dab in the middle exploring the wilderness, which you do. Has your monkey on top of your head as your little pet, which you have in the game. I named mine Lalo. You have, um, you know, different little items and whatnot you can collect around the survival kids, like the uh, radio that you use, your knives, the bow and arrow, the ivy. The only item that you see that you don't actually use is the um, um, slingshot. And so uh, that's a little bit deceitful. But I mean, hey, I mean, they, they put one item on there that you don't use when all the other ones that you do use. And from what I've read, like you actually get a slingshot in survival kits too. So maybe like a little bit of foreshadowing on that. Also, there are alligators, there are bees, and there is a little hut just like that on the beach. Overall, excellent cover for the game. And even the art style is actually represented pretty darn solidly inside the game to compare to what the cover is. They did a really good job with that for the cutscenes. But a uh, great cover for the game. Now, when you start it up, the tile screen has the tile of the game, of course. A nice little uh, island scene behind it, sort of representing what the uh, game is all about here. Surviving on an island, and very upbeat chiptune music in the background. Um, overall, the soundtrack for this game is going to be pretty fantastic start to finish, but the uh, tile screen sort of sets the uh, tone for that before we get into it. Now, when you press start, of course, you get to name your character. I named my character Ogle because Ogles wouldn't fit. And you do get to choose if you want to be a boy or a girl. I did choose a boy for the game. And then we get a nice little cutscene here. It's like really well animated. It almost looks like identical to what the cover of the game looked. They did a fantastic job with the Game Boy Color could do graphics wise here. But it shows a, a little scene of me and my father on a massive boat. I mean, it cannot be understated like how large this boat is for literally just two people. And we're out in this little boat celebrating my 10th birthday. And um, on this uh, particular day, he does give me a knife because I guess I've reached a uh, status of adulthood. I can have my own little pocket knife and whatnot to use for however I see fit. And it seems like a really good day. Happy music, good animation, happy, happy day for me, my father. But when nightfall comes, of course, a massive storm comes around, hits the boat, capsizes the boat, and um, I am washed away, and my father uh, disappears into the ocean as well, never to be seen of again. And um, I don't know if there's going to be like a different ending in the game, and I don't mean to spoil anything too early on, but as far as I can tell, your father actually dies in the scene. And so a fairly sad start to the game here. But then it goes into like a little intro scene of almost like Link's Awakening. I've been washed up on the beach here. And uh, the only thing on the beach is, of course, the uh, rubble of my particular boat that's been destroyed. And there's a little monkey sort of watching over me at the same time. And then if the monkey does choose to poke me a little bit, and of course that's going to wake me up, the monkey gets a little bit frightened and the monkey runs away. But now I am awake. I start wondering, is my dad okay? Is he not okay? What happened to the boat? What's going on, basically? But um, like a true survival kid here, I say I'm going to put all my emotions, all my worries to the side, and I just need to focus on how to survive on this island by myself. Now at this point you are able to start controlling your character and the game is very limited as far as like allowing you only to travel on this opening beach here because you're going to try to teach you the basics of how to play the game. And so uh, you have no weapon, you have no items, you have literally nothing. And so all you can do is walk up to different items and press A to explore what that item is and see if you can pick it up or what you can do with that particular item. And by exploring and pressing A on all of the different items, you slowly find your knapsack or your backpack here, which has like its knife in it, has a map in it as well as a broken radio and a pack of matches. And then you can equip the knife and you can start cutting down some bushes around you. You get your canteen this way, so you can actually store water, so you can survive a little bit longer when you're exploring the island. And so like the opening scene here is basically showing you, you have to pretty much approach everything, press A, see what it does, see if it gives you an item, and then you're slowly accumulating all these different items in order to explore the island some more. But there's one thing that needs to be emphasized here, investigate everything is a core part of the game, and I feel like they are setting you up perfectly for that with this little beach scene. 
And from this point, I do chop down the little bush to the north, and I begin to sort of open up the island and explore some more. And you are going to collect a lot of different items, such as like sticks and different um, grasses and different mushrooms. And you don't really know the effects of a lot of these things, or like what you can eat, what you can't eat, until of course you actually try it out. And then you may have like some ill effects from it, but at least you know what those particular items do for the future. And so as you're continuing to explore here, collecting pretty much everything inside, you eventually come upon a, like a little hut here, like a little village, and it seems to be abandoned. No one lives there. And so naturally I go in and make it my own home. I can rest there for the night. This is where like my uh, home base that I can set up in, uh, recover myself, you know, uh, store things in a little chest over here. And just sort of like my, uh, like I said, my home base. And while I'm in the home here, I do want to pause for a second and just sort of acknowledge like how great the music is inside the home here because like uh, when you're here it's obviously like a peaceful area you're sort of uh, sheltered from the surroundings but at the same time you're very lonely and like the music here like combines peaceful and melancholy pretty much perfectly and so we're going to pause here just to sort of listen to the music of the home base just for a second Now, personally, it's probably my favorite song in the entire game, simply because it's like combines the two emotions so well, and I just like the way it sounds. But like the entire soundtrack is pretty phenomenal. But the game also sort of gives me my next direction here. It says I'm hungry, I need to find food. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen here, it actually has all your, um, I guess, your basic statistics or your basic um, stats. And it shows H for hunger, basically how much food you've eaten. You know, are you filled up? W for water, are you needing water? Do you need to go out and find some more water? And then of course, F for fatigue. And the longer the day goes on, the higher number this gets. And when it gets all the way to 100, you are maxed out and you'll begin to lose all your HP until you can get back to your hut in order to rest. Basically, hunger and water, when they reach zero, you'll start losing your HP. And when your fatigue is maxed out, you'll start losing your HP. And if your HP itself gets all the way down to zero, that's when you die and you have a game over. But uh, you can save your game, so um, you can just simply resume back from your last save spot. But the game did say that I was hungry, so I go out into the uh, little wilderness here. I find a uh, rabbit. I kill the rabbit. I get the meat off the rabbit. You obviously can't eat raw meat, though. You got to figure out some way to cook it. I kill a duck. I get the meat off the duck, as well as a feather. But back to the meat, I do have to figure out a way to cook the meat. And so um, I do find what's called a tree bark and a stick. And if you combine those two items together, there's a merge feature in the game. You go to merge, select your different items. And some of it makes sense. Some of it doesn't make like perfect sense as far as like, what you merge. But um, if you put a stick and a tree bark together at that point you have what's called a kindling and of course at this point you can basically sort of make your own campfire and then of course you can cook the meat over the campfire and you have cooked meat you can eat that and recover your health and you're going to have to be doing this pretty much constantly throughout uh, the entire game so now that my hunger is satisfied i start to notice that my water is going down and my water reach is all the way to zero i start losing my hp and i actually die for the first time in the game and when you do die you have a little game over screen here and like a little angel comes out of your body so like you legitimately like die inside the game but you can come back to your last save spot and when you go back to your last save spot at this point i know i need to focus on finding water and so i begin to like explore more out here and i go to the east and in the east i find a little monkey over there by the creek he's getting himself a drink of water he sees me gets frightened and he jumps off to the right and so but now i know i can go over to the creek here i can fill up my canteen i can also just simply drink from the creek and i can now replenish my water supply so now i know how to replenish my health i know how to replenish my water i know how to uh, reduce my fatigue and so i'm pretty much set as far as like my stats go for the game now also in this new area that i'm at i do find some ivy i find a flex bow and these make somewhat sense here i mean you combine a you know a rope looking item with a bendable bow or a bendable uh, stick obviously you're gonna make a bow out of it and i create my first uh, bow i don't have any arrows yet but i do have a bow and i go up to a large rock here i'm able to pick the rock up throw it into the river and that kills a fish allows me to get a fish out of that cook the fish eat the fish and i have to say like the game is very very uh, interactive Pretty much anything that you see inside the game, it looks like an item, it's going to be an item that you can either pick up or interact with. And you can often combine those with other items to make more items. Like there's a lot to the game, especially for a Game Boy game. And so there's a lot of experimentation as far as like just sort of trial and error. Try this item, merge it with this other item. Do you get something cool out of it? Some of it makes sense, some of it a little bit less sense. But things like the bow and arrow, or I'm getting ready to make a fishing rod here in a second. 
all the all those items make like perfect sense when you're creating them now while i am exploring this new area i do come across a little swamp and of course you can't drink from the swamp water because it's uh, you know nasty rancid water you'll get sick from that but you can sort of explore around these little lily pads it doesn't really seem to go anywhere at this point but i do find what's called a big stick over here in the swamp and the big stick is going to allow me to uh, basically move giant boulders you know sort of like a um, um what's the right word i'm looking for um a levering system. A levering system is what I'm looking for. That's how you'll move these giant boulders. And so now I begin to look around the island here. What giant boulders can I move? I end up finding one up to the upper left of my home little um, base here. And when I get here, the monkey, of course, steals my backpack, all of my items, and then sort of runs away. So now I have to chase after the monkey in order to get my items back. When I do find him, he's like resting on a little top of a tree here. Takes a, you know, like a little coconut or something, throws and hits me right, right in the head. I mean, the game has a little bit of a sense of humor at the same time. But I do get my uh, backpack uh, back from him. And also in this new area that he's led me to has a pointy rock. And I can combine a pointy rock with a stick and a feather in order to finally make an arrow. So I have my official bow and arrow set up. This is going to make hunting so much easier because you don't actually have to get close to an animal, hit him with your knife, and take a chance on losing some HP in the process. You can just sort of hunt him out from a distance way way easy it's also in this area there's a little uh, christmas looking tree here a pine tree of sorts and you can go up to that tree and you can interact with it and you're going to get some sap off of it and if you combine the sap and a stick together you can make a torch and you can uh, basically light the torch from one of your kindling or one of your campfires and when you go into a cave you can actually explore the caves and sort of you know see where you're going as you're making that journey now um, one thing that is sort of annoying is like every time you go into a cave you are going to, have to lay out like a little uh, campsite there you know get your little fire going then select the torch get the torch going and sometimes you wish you could have like some hot keys for some of this stuff but at the same time this is like you know a early game boy color game it makes complete sense that that would not be part of the uh, mechanism now the cave does have some bats in and some snakes and some uh, centipedes uh, pretty much the stuff that you would expect to find inside of a cave and like let's just like also pause for a second and just acknowledge like how many different uh, animals and different insects that you can actually find in the game and kill in the game for a food source because they could have just as easily like you know phoned it in here and given you like a, i don't know like a rabbit and a duck and it's like the only two animals man i'm telling you, you get like a mole you get a uh, like i said a duck a rabbit a fox a wolf uh, what else do you get inside a game? A raccoon inside the game, a scorpion, a spider. I mean, I'm leaving some of them out here. I know that I am, but there are like so many different animals that you can, uh, oh, oh, like a deer or an elk. Um, like there's so many that you can just find inside the game to attack and get a variety of meat off of them. And like I said, it's just cool. They actually took the time to sort of make the game uh, more expansive. But when I do exit out the cave here, I do approach a little flint rock and I can take the flint, combine it with a stick again, and now I can make an ax and I can actually cut down some of the uh, bigger trees inside the arena, which also allows me to explore more of the island. And so uh, the game has a very good pace about it here, giving you items to slowly open the island up more and more. Now, some of the trees that I cut down, of course, lead me back to the monkey. He's looking at his little hole in the ground, which I don't explore until later, which I should have been a little more proactive on that. But the monkey gets afraid. He runs off again. And we're eventually going to get to what the monkey is all about here. But you continue in that direction. Now you're back into the lake region that you saw earlier. And the game is very interconnected as far as like... When you explore one region, you think you're going to a totally new area, and then it loops back around. And I do like games that sort of make everything interconnected. And so, like, when you come across the area, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this spot. And now you can sort of have to find a little shortcuts how to get to different locations a whole lot faster. It's also in this area you get the Umbrella Leaf, and I didn't actually equip it for a long time until later in the game, but I'll put the uh, clip of it in use here. The Umbrella Leaf allows you when it's rainy to put it above your head, and it's, a, uh, it's an adorable little animation here of you walking around with this giant leaf above your head shielding yourself from the rain. As far as I can tell, like there's no benefit to actually using the Umbrella Leaf. It might say something like your uh, fatigue stats or something like that. I don't know if it does or not, but um, I didn't use it hardly at all for the game unless I just want, sort of wanted to pull it out. For the uh, the sprite effect but i do wander around the island for a good while here trying to figure like where do i go next well like is there any part i haven't explored yet and i eventually come back to that little hole that the monkey was looking at earlier that i just sort of uh, looked over and inside that hole is a, a broken radio and if you take the broken radio you can take the batteries out of the broken radio and then you can take those batteries back to your broken radio put the batteries in it and now you have a fully functional radio that you can use uh, inside of your little uh, hut here now you do go to sleep for the night you wake up the next day your radio is a buzzing it's working and you finally hear a little broadcast over the radio that says uh the search for any survivors from the wreckage has been called off and like how depressing and how like um deflating that would be to your uh, motivation here because you're trying so hard you know just simply to survive until they come and rescue you 
and now there's no one coming. And so uh, our little hero here, he's obviously upset, but he says, you know what? I got to carry on. I got to make a raft now in order to sell myself off of this boat since no one's coming to rescue me. He's a very resourceful kid. So I go down to the beach here. I begin to explore, you know, all the wreckage, begin to get little pieces of it like lumber and nails. I begin to sort of construct my raft down here on the beach. As I'm doing this, a large storm sort of comes out of nowhere and uh, I get worried about it and it tells me to go back to my hut to sort of seek shelter throughout the storm. I go back to my hut. The uh, storm gets worse and worse. It sounds like it's a possible typhoon. And instead of, you know, like worrying more about it, my little hero here just decides simply to just go to sleep and put it out of his mind. And when he wakes up in the next morning, he realized like his house has been like halfway destroyed. He slept through all of that. And off to the side, the little monkey is trapped underneath some rubble of the house. And he's obviously screeching, you know, hurt and bad shape here. And so I go over there, I lift it off of my little uh, lever system here, my little leverage, and I knock the rubble off of him and the monkey is very much happy and now me and the monkey officially become friends in the game and it's like your little pet monkey and you, and you get to name your new pet and i named him lalo after my cat lalo um, i mean it makes perfect sense and some of the stuff in the game is going to match up like literally perfectly with like lalo's personality being like really energetic and um just i don't know it's a great matchup here with my cat lalo and if you watch my channel much or you follow me on instagram anything like that you know I love my cats, and this this matches up literally, like I said, perfectly. But now you're not so much worried about your raft. Now you have to, of course, get your house back in good shape because you have to have somewhere to uh, stay during the night and whatnot. And so now you start rebuilding your house, you know, getting the supplies ready, searching the environment. And of course, you fix your house back up. You can now stay in it again. And I love like the little scenes where it's like just you on your little mattress over here, Lalo by the door. I don't know. It's just like a great little cozy scene inside the game. And of course, now that you've got your house rebuilt, you need to focus again on rebuilding the uh, raft. And so I get all the supplies ready for the raft. I get on the raft. I invite Lalo to come along with me and touching the little scene of like Lalo wanting to come along. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you can't come. And I'm like, ah, come on, get on the raft with me. We set off. Things appear to be going well at first. And then the game starts like taking a, um, a sad turn here. It shows us out in the middle of the sea. It says we have no food. We have no water. We're exhausted. We're in bad shape. It says we wish we had packed more food. And then we get a black screen and it says exactly, Ogle never woke up again. And like, wow, what a horrified and uh, depressing little scene here of saying that I died at sea. And that's the ending of the game. And gives me, I think it said ending number uh, two. And so I achieved one of the endings. It didn't give me any credit because it's considered one of the uh, bad endings of the game, which makes sense. I mean, I die in it. And it gives me like a little bit of a uh, mosaic here that's not filled in because it's a, considered one of the bad endings. And like, that's just a really heartbreaking way to finish the game. But this is not going to be the end of our journey because um, if I can have the credits roll in the game, that's what I consider completing the game. And the credits did not roll here. And I know that the credits do roll when you get certain good endings. So we're going to have to go and focus on getting a good ending of the game and go back into our little process here. So we load the game back up and I got to figure out like, what do I need to do in order to survive on this particular raft in order to uh, continue the journey and not have a sad ending. And um, I've tried multiple times, like getting enough food, getting enough water, filling up my canteen, preserving food, all this stuff I could do to try to survive. And I never could like really do it until I figured out there was one tree inside the um, little uh, beach here. If you go to this tree, there's what's called a big berry. And you get to play like a little mini game here of your monkey trying to climb up all the trunks of these little palm trees in order to get to big berry at the top. And there's little sticks and little crabs and little leaves falling down trying to hit you. And um, as simple as this little mini game sounds here, it probably took me a solid like 15 minutes to actually get the berry out of the tree. It's way harder than you think because once you get it twice, the uh, little mini game restarts and the berries in a different location and the things fall in different locations as well. But um, at least it's like a little way to uh, mix the gameplay up. But uh, once I get the big berry, I'm able to uh, take, you know, my other items like my preserved meats and the honeys and have my stats pretty much maxed out. I'm able to get back on the raft and for the first time I can finally sail away from the island and things appear to be going pretty well for me and Lalo on our little boat here. However, just like the original boat in the game, a bad storm comes up, it hits the boat, it capsizes again, and I get washed up on what appears to be a different island uh, inside of the little area. 
And of course, I've lost all my items again. I have to search for them, you know, regain them all back. Luckily, Lalo is okay. He rejoins my team as well. And we begin to explore the island that we're on now. And as I'm journeying through this part, I come across this massive boat that's docked by seven chains coming off of it, attached to the little blocks that you need symbols in in order to unlock those chains. And so um, I go in there. There's my new uh, resting spot, my new hub. And, you know, there's a place you can store your items and whatnot. You can stay the night here. Um, you know, reduce your fatigue. But our new mission in the game is going to be to find the seven gems in order to unlock all of these chains in order to get this boat to finally set sail and hopefully make my way back home. Now, I did already find the star gem. It was just sort of um, there immediately when you're working your way to the boat. And so I can go in and, you know, put the star gem in there, get one of the uh, chains gone, and I need six more um, gems in order to get this boat ready to set sail. And I really do enjoy what the game is trying to do here. Instead of just simply being a normal survival game, where you know you just simply live out your time on the island, maybe just simply get a regular old raft, sail away. Now they're adding into like a little bit of a mystery here. Like why is this boat here? Why are the uh, gems, you know, attaching it with chains? Why is it docked like that? Why are all these uh, stone heads buried inside the sand like it's Easter Island or something? And so like the game is attempting to establish like, is there a, a ancient culture that's living here? What is the mystery behind it? And I just enjoy that they're trying to expand it further beyond just simply, hey, survive on the island and see how well you can do. But I continue to explore what seems to be a new uh, island that I'm on here. And of course, I'm trying to find my way. I come across these crocodiles or these alligators and I can't get by them. And there's only one way to get the alligators to uh, shut their mouths or go to sleep in order to cross over on their head. And that is to feed them a uh, clam. And I don't know if like the game like specifically said that at some point and I like missed it. I don't think it did. But um, sort of trial and error, you eventually figure out if you feed them a clam, at that point they go to sleep and of course you can begin to walk across their head and explore more of the areas. I go off to the far east here, I do come across like a little sign, it's a sort of dirty, corroded. If you take your uh, canteen water, you can pour it on and sort of, you know, clean it up a little bit. It shows like a little map over the island and there's also like a little stone head over here that's missing a eye. And so um, you're going to have to try to find an eye to figure out, you know, what unlock that puzzle. And of course, I continue on. I do need another clam in order to make the bottom alligator go to sleep. I backtrack, get that clam, make him go to sleep. But that seems like a really far area to explore. So I go off to the west. And when I go off to the west, I fall off a little cliff here. And then all of a sudden, I'm back on the original island that I was on at the very beginning of the game. Which means that this new island is not new at all. It's just simply a secondary part of the island that I was already on. And so um, I really just simply uh, didn't sail anywhere. When I capsized, I washed right back to where I was. So I'm back at square one here, but a few things have changed on the initial island that I was at. And there's one particular area you can go up to, and there's like a little rock on the edge of a cliff. If you take your bow and arrow, shoot the rock, it's going to fall down and open up a new path that you can go on. As I'm traveling through this, I do come across a little waterfall that's covering up like an, a very obvious cave behind it. I go into that cave. I find what's called the palace key, which is going to come in very handy later. And I'm also able to use ivy to sort of like make a little rope bridge and use a little um, big stick, like make like a little log to uh, climb over as well. And so the game, like I said earlier, is, is very interactive with like the different items that you have. And this little path through the cave is going to actually lead me back to the alligator swamp. And so like now I know how to go between the two parts of the island. And so I do go back to the part where I'm sort of climbing up the cliff by the waterfall. I do chop down some trees. I get my next uh, gym here, which is going to be the uh, Rhombus gym. And so I can take it back to the boat here in a second. But I continue to climb up the mountain here. And there's going to be another gym, uh, the uh, little circle gym here. It's going to be basically hanging on the edge of a cliff on a little bitty branch. And if I approach it, then the little uh, oval gym begins to fall down. And it falls down below the waterfall into the very base of the creek. And if you go all the way back down to the base of the creek here, you, we learned about this earlier. If you take the big rock, you throw it into the um, little water. Last time we just simply got a fish as a reward. This time we get to play like a little mini game. You have to press like A and B as fast as you possibly can to build up the power that you're going to throw the rock into the creek. And uh, if your power is high enough, then you're going to be able to capture a big fish. And inside the big fish, wouldn't you know it, it swallowed the oval gem. And so now I have three of the seven gems that I need to unchain the boat. Now, also while I'm up here, I do find a little uh, bonfire. So that means there's someone else on the island. And it's also up here, I get to play another little mini game where there's a little tree over here. There's a little egg on top. I want to get the egg. So the monkey climbs up into the top and he's getting ready to throw the egg out. And I just have to run back and forth, left and right, in order to catch the egg. A very simple mini game. I got it the very first try and um, probably the lamest of all the mini games. The one where you're climbing a tree is definitely the best one, but still it's fun to sort of break the uh, pace of the game up a little bit 
of these little extra activities. But now that I've got a few of the gems, I do journey back to the boat to put them in the uh, appropriate little docking locations. And it's along this path I find someone else who's been stranded on the beach. I uh, basically sort of rescue them. I take them back to the uh, boat. I cook them some food to get them recuperated a little bit. And of course, we begin to talk a little bit and share our stories. And uh, the girl you get to name yourself, I do name her Rach after my wife, Rachel. And of course, she has the exact same backstory as me. Her boat capsized. And of course, she'd been stranded on the island and she wants to get off of it just like I do. So now we're going to work as basically a team in order to finally uh, get this boat to sail away. And since I was so nice to her and she wants to help in this journey, she gives me one of the um, stones or one of the gems. This particular one's going to be the opal gem. And I can, of course, place it in the docking location. And so now I have four of the seven gems down, only three more to go. Now at this point, I think the only location I hadn't explored yet is of course the uh, bottom part of the alligator swamp. I head back down there, there's a little lily pad maze you have to go through. You have to pick up one lily pad in order to use it in a particular lo location. And of course you sail across there, you do get your uh, square gem. So I have five of the seven at this point. And also the swamp water goes down for uh, whatever reason, I'm not really sure what the reason was, or I don't remember at least for this review. But the uh, swamp water does go down here and it exposes a um, iron chunk, you can get that combined with a uh, stick and now you have a hammer so you've expanded your repertoire even further out here as far as like what you can explore on the island and if you go off to the east here you find yourself into a little desert area and there's really not that much to explore inside the desert there's one little pendant that you can pick up and return back to rage and i think that may like affect the ending of the game a little bit because it's a item that belonged to her and also if you go up to one of the uh, stone heads use your newfound hammer slam into it you get the uh, little eyeball and if you recall the eyeball was required early on in order to put inside of a uh, stone head further up inside the swamp and of course when you go back and you do that it opens up a little hidden pathway and you head off on that pathway and you get your triangle gem so now we have six of the seven gems and we are well on our way to finally get the boat to undock or so we thought anyway because when i put all six gems into the uh, slots here another earthquake happens and when that happens the mountain system opens up a palace area that i can now go to explore well lucky for me i did find the palace key earlier so i just simply go back to where the mountains were which is where we um, initially had the monkey uh, steal all of our uh, backpack and throw a little coconut on our head we go back to there we go into the palace and uh, we have all these ruins opened up from an ancient civilization. And I really do love that the game is trying to uh, branch out as far as like, what is the lore of this island? Who is this ancient civilization? What is that boat doing here? All that. And those are questions that I wish were answered or had like a little bit of a backstory. And they're really not as far as I can tell. There may be like a different ending that I didn't get that sort of explains that more. But um, I was constantly hoping for more explanation of the history of this island. And I just simply wasn't given that. I do love the idea that the mystery is there and maybe there is a way to figure it out. I just simply wasn't able in this playthrough. But back to the palace. The palace is actually a pretty fun area to explore inside the game because there's a lot of little puzzles and like little different gameplay elements or different um, things to figure out that are pretty much unique to just this area of the game. First off, in order to get one of the keys, you do have to solve like a little boat puzzle and you have to like, you know, arrange the tiles in a certain way in order to get the boat to appear. You get a key that way. Another one is you have to like follow a certain staircase and figure out like the perfect directions to go in. And that's a lot of trial and error here. And it's a little bit on the uh, deceitful side too. Cause sometimes like when you go up a stairway, if you go back down that same stairway, it takes you to a different area. And um, it's a little bit hard to figure out because it doesn't seem to make like a lot of sense to me. They probably could have done a little bit better on the um, stairway puzzle here. You get a key that way. Also just simply by chopping down some bushes, you get a key that way as well. There's also a few maze activities as far as like figuring out like how to um, extinguish these little fires here and then how to light two fires later on to get certain doors to open. And then the final little puzzle here leading up to the uh, final gym, which is the moon gym, you have to go through an invisible maze. So like you're traveling up and there's little invisible walls that are blocking you off. And it's sort of a, a trial and error trying to figure out your way through this particular maze to get up to the moon gym. And um, it doesn't seem like it would be that tricky but when you're trying to fight off, you know, getting too tired of fatigue to lose an HP. Uh, some of that can get a little bit on the frustrating side trying to work your way through the maze. But once you get to Moon Gym, a new stairway opens up to the upper right part of this level. You go down the stairs, you're back near the boat again. And of course, you can finally put the last gym inside the uh, little docking station. And at this point, there are no more chains on the boat. You can get in the boat and you can officially sail off 
with Rach and your pet monkey Lalo and um, this is going to be the ending of the game. It has a pretty good little cutscene here. You and Rach talk about how excited you are to go home, you know, the adventures that you've gone through and of course, you know, you got to meet each other through the adventures but still, it was a, a really rough time in each of your lives and then it does a really neat thing as far as like recapturing like all the major moments in the game of like what day you did those events, like when you first, you know, discovered your house, when you first met Lalo, when the storm came through, when you used the raft, when you met Rage, when you discovered the palace or the ruins and it's like a, a overall summary of your adventure through the game and um, it's just a really cool way to finish the game off to like remind you of all like all that you've gone through in order to escape this island or this uh, pretty uh, traumatic event for you and at this point the credits do begin to roll so we did get one of the good endings in the game we got ending number six and I believe what I read there are eight endings in the game so uh, we still did not get all of the endings and according to the end of it we did not even get the absolute best ending but we did get one of the good endings because we got the credits to roll. But let's talk about the game as like an overall here. The game took me probably like five to six hours to finish. And um, as I was going through it, like for the most part, it's a really fun, really enjoyable, really inventive game that looks great and sounds great on the Game Boy. And so like on the surface, it's a great game to play. And I do recommend going through it because it's a fun adventure. However, there are a few things that are going to be a little bit cryptic in the game, like uh, merging some of the items together. Some of them make like perfect sense, but some of them are like pretty random and like you really wouldn't figure it out like on your own in order to merge certain items together in order to unlock things. And so that's a little bit on the um, annoying or confusing side. And then I also feel like the uh, soft lock to get the bad ending when you're selling off on your raft like halfway through the game, that is a really complex way to get to yourself to transition to the second part of the island here because you pretty much have to stack yourself completely with a uh, preserved meat and honey and um, the big berry and like in order to get all of that perfectly in order to sell across to make the journey man that's a lot like it took me a while to actually you know or multiple tries to actually finally make the journey on that and i feel like a lot of players are gonna be sort of soft locked into the bad ending of the game and that can get a little bit on the frustrating side as well but at the same time like you know the game they made a mechanic they stuck with it and you can admire them for that. But outside of that being a little bit cryptic and some of the merging being a little bit cryptic, I feel like for the most part, the game gives you pretty good direction on like where to go as far as like you collect new items, these new items unlock different paths, almost like a Metroidvania to a degree because you find new items to find new areas to explore. And so um, I feel like they do a good job as far as like introducing it slowly but surely to just not like overwhelm you on side of the island, but also to sort of give you uh, everything that you need. And I also like how like everything is interconnected on the island. Like there's nothing more thrilling than uh, finding a shortcut back to another area in order to establish a quicker path. And so I do enjoy that. And also there's like so much to find in every one of the areas of the island. Whether well, there's like new animals to kill in the area, uh, new um, items to get, new things to merge, just simply new scenery to see, uh, like dead bodies in some of the caves, a little bit of the lore in that aspect, some of the mystery lore when it comes to the boat and, you know, like the stone heads on the island. I wish it done like a little bit more with the lore and it might on one of the endings. I just simply didn't, maybe didn't get that. But um, there's so much to explore on the island and it really just sort of brings it to uh, brings the island to life in a lot of ways. And the soundtrack goes a long ways as far as like making it feel even better in that aspect. But also like as far as like replayability, I went through and I got two different endings in the game and there are eight different endings. Like you could play this game multiple times and try to figure out like how to get all the endings and really expand the story even further out. And so um, I like games, especially of this era, that give you multiple endings, multiple reasons to replay the game and go through it. And like I said, I think it's one of the first uh, survival games at the time. And so like, there's a lot of positives on this game. I would say if I was given a scale of one to 10, I'd give this game a solid eight on a scale of one to 10. There are a few things they could tweak to make it better. Some shortcuts, you know, as far as like using your items and such as that, making things a little bit less cryptic in some areas, a little bit more explanation, like some of the tutorials. But for the most part, a very playable experience in 2023. I feel like you can go through it. You can have a lot of fun and it's just simply an enjoyable early survival game. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos listed up above. And if there's a game that you want to see me cover sooner or later, let me know the name of that game in the comments down below. As always, go out there, find a great game to play. Simply have a great rest of the day.